Good morning and welcome to our worship wherever you are and wherever you're from. How have your week's been? How have you feeling today? We're gathered here virtually online whether you're watching it live or watching it later. We're here and God knows we're here and he knows that we are worshipping him together and he has purposes for our lives. I'm going to read for us from Psalm 67 to show the key purpose which God has made us for. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. Isn't that great? He, we, we exist so that he can bless us. Why? So that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. God blesses us that we may bless others. We have a real eternal purpose. We are loved and delighted in. I hope you know that today. And I hope that you may be encouraged in that as we carry on, as different people from across the six parishes I serve in uh, contribute to our worship. For those who don't know me, my name's Tudor, and it's great to be with you. And if you don't know me, please do get in contact. My email address and my phone number will be on, uh, the, uh, on the screen later on in the service. Now, it's been a difficult week, hasn't it, internationally? There's been much outrage, much sadness, much fear around the state of Afghanistan about what's happening there. And although the focus has often been on the issue of uh, women's rights, understandably, actually there's a real issue for people of all other faiths, particularly for Christians. It's not just Afghanistan, there are many, many areas of the world where Christians are persecuted for our faith, where there is not freedom of religion. And so I'm going to start our worship today with a prayer, a prayer which prays for all people, but particularly does pray for those who are persecuted. So let's lift our hearts as we gather now to God in prayer. O oh Lord, bring hope to your suffering people. In their anguish and pain be you their hope. Bring hope, O oh Lord, to your persecuted people. In their despair may you be their hope. 
Bring hope, O Lord, to your needy people. In their hunger and thirst, you are their hope. Bring hope, O Lord, to your dying people. In the hour of their death, you are their hope. Bless us, Lord, as we worship you this morning. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Well, our opening hymn is one you'll know well. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Let's focus on him. Let's stand and enjoy singing his praises now. thinking about those in Afghanistan and elsewhere who are physically persecuted but actually we live in a world where we Christians are part of a spiritual battle as we've been hearing in Ephesians this last two months. Today we're going to be looking at the last part of Ephesians and, uh, and talking about putting on the armour of God and what that means. But of course actually we live in a world where there are various persecutions and each one of us in our everyday lives faces pressure, social pressure to conform, and so we're going to read now, have read for us by Caroline Baines from our Brough Congregation, words that Jesus spoke to his followers, saying, do not fear. And he told us to expect difficulty, but not to worry, because he is with us. Caroline Baines is going to read from Matthew chapter 10, beginning at verse 16. The reading is from Matthew chapter 10, beginning at verse 16. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard against men. They will hand you over to the local councils and flog you in their synagogues. On my account you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, 
but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. I tell you the truth, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the student to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household. So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father, and even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Thank you, Caroline. Well, Jesus has so much to say, so much wisdom, so much blessing. Uh, I expect that as we, as you heard those words, you're thinking, yes, that's, that's me. I'm brave. I'm courageous. Uh, I know there's nothing to fear. I'm a person everyone knows as a Christian. I, I shine in my word and my deeds. Uh, I, I transform every situation I'm in. Well, I know that I don't. I know that I'm not the person that God is making me to be. And boy, do I want to be more like that. Isn't it great that God, our Heavenly Father, doesn't judge us on our success? He loves to us to come to him and say, Dad, I've messed up. Please forgive me. Please help me. And that's what we're going to do now in the words of our confession. Words come up on the screen. Let's join together and confess our sins before our gracious Heavenly Father. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Now may the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we're going to sing our next song now as we come uh, to one we haven't sung a lot. It's a new one to us this last year. It's called Jesus Strong and Kind. That tender tenderness of Jesus, actually getting to know him personally, not in a big impressive showy way, but actually he is someone we want to be with. Let's remind one another of this as we sing Jesus Strong and Kind. If I thirst, I should come to him. No one else can satisfy, I should come to him. Jesus said, If I am weak, I should come to him. No. 
continue declaring the wonderful nature of the God who loves us and who draws us close to him in Jesus as we stand and say together the creed. Words on the screen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us express our faith as God's people together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. as we come before our loving Heavenly Father then, that, that confidence and joy, then let's, let's keep praying. I'm going to hand over now to Cheryl Orme, who's going to continue to lead us in our prayers. Lord, as we come before you, we take this time to honour your love to us, so we can share with each other and to others that we meet your glorious love wisdom and grace through our encouragement of each other especially in these times when there are barriers in our way help us to stand on your word and peace lord bless us and keep us 
We have so many things in our day-to-day -day lives that we are thankful for. We give thanks for our families and friends, for the abundant nature surrounding us. We particularly think of others that may be struggling at this time with wildfires, floods, droughts and war. Lord, may your hope, kindness and practical help be with those in need. Lord, bless us and keep us. We pray for those in authority Help to give them understanding and wisdoms in decisions which can be sometimes difficult. We pray for our Bishop James and our own clergy team, the PCCs. As COVID restrictions are changing to give more freedoms in these challenging times. Give them protection against any evil force that may try and divide so that unity can be enfolded. Lord, bless us and keep us. We lift anyone that is known and unknown to us that needs your healing prayer due to illness, fear, surgery and those that are grieving at this time. May they know your ultimate peace and tranquility. In the silence of this room, we uphold those known to us. Lord, bless us and keep us. Lord, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Even though we know God is there, when we look out at the world, when we hear the news, it's so easy, isn't it, to feel isolated, lonely, as if we are unimportant, as if we are just a, a number, an insignificant ant. But we're not that to the Lord God. No. And so we can live our lives with confidence and joy because of his love for us. And our next song reminds of that, us, us of this. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name, you are mine. Let's stand and sing to our Lord. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. Is looming. Remember, I am a 
are mine. God has claimed us and he will protect us. And so how should we go about living as his beloved children? Well, Graham Orme is going to read to us from the final part of Ephesians chapter 6 before Sue Ward preaches for us. Let's listen and read Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse 10. Today's reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 24. The armour of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given so that I will be fiercely made, made known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Tychicus, the dear brother and faithful servant in the Lord, will tell you everything, so that you, you also may know how I am and what am I am doing. I am sending him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are, and that he may encourage you. Peace to the brothers and sisters, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with undying love. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today we come to the last part of the last chapter of Paul's letter to the young church in Ephesus. But before we dive into the passage and find out what God might want to say to us through it, let's just be quiet for a moment and consciously ask to know his presence and to hear his voice. Let's pray. Lord, take my words and our ears and hearts. Draw near to us now and help us to listen expectantly, hear accurately and remember faithfully all you want to say to us today. Amen. This is a very familiar passage and it may bring up many memories of rousing hymns calling us to arm ourselves in the armour of God. Memories of children dressing in the army of a Roman soldier and countless sermons intended to help us to apply it in our own lives. So let's see if we can get behind the well-known words and ask God how this might be fresh and relevant to us here today. Verse 10 begins, finally. Paul says it often, finally. In other words, he's looking back over his letter, one in which he has emphasised what we believe in, what we believe about God, and what God has done for us. And then he shows how this belief should be reflected in our Christian lives, as we are enabled by Christ to join him in his work of restoring our broken selves, our broken families, our broken world, our broken church, and our broken society. Let's look again at the passage in a modern version, which can cut through the beauty of language in our familiar work version, easier to memorise perhaps, but also easier to be lulled by until we hear the beauty, 
could escape from the reality that Paul is addressing. So reading from the message. And that about wraps it up. God is strong and he wants you strong. So take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials, and put them to use so you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. This is no weekend war that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get, every weapon God has issued, so that when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. And don't forget to pray for me. Pray that I'll know what to say and have the courage to say it at the right time. Telling the mystery to one and all, the message that I, jailbird preacher that I am, am responsible for getting out. Tychicus, my good friend here, will tell you what I'm doing and how things are going with me. He's certainly a dependable servant of the master. I've sent him not only to tell you about us, but to cheer you on in your faith. Goodbye, friends. Love mixed with faith be yours from God the Father and from the Master, Jesus Christ. Pure grace and nothing but grace be with you all who love our Master, Jesus Christ. So, finally, in the light of all that he has written, Paul reminds us that we are all of us involved in a war. That there is a battle to fight and that we're all involved. There are no non-combatants, no pacifists in this conflict. Our faith is not a comfort in the sense we commonly use the word, a cosy blanket to insulate us from reality. It's a comfort in the sense that it is our strength for the fight, a fight where the ultimate enemy is the devil. In ourselves, we've nothing to help us fight effectively, but the God who has steadily revealed himself throughout history often describes himself as a soldier armed for battle. And wonderfully, he has shared that armour with us. Armour on its own, though, is not enough. Just as David, the shepherd who volunteered to fight Goliath, was, when I, was unable to wear the armour a soldier of his day considered a basic need. That armour was unfamiliar, heavy and a hindrance rather than a strength. We need to train to wear the armour that God supplies. Just dressing up in the armour doesn't qualify us and turn us into skilled soldiers. So what are we to do? What holds us back from the battle when God has supplied all that we need to fight effectively for him and ultimately share his victory? I recently heard a story about a newly qualified driver going out alone for the first time. He pulled away smoothly from the house, turned the corner and stopped at the main road. Looking both ways and checking his mirrors, he pulled out into the bigger road and was dismayed to find that no matter how much he pressed the accelerator, the car only trundled along slowly. And then smoke began to appear behind him. In a panic, he pulled up and called his father, who in the light of many years of experience asked, have you taken the handbrake off? Something was holding him back. What holds us back? There will be as many reasons as there are people who hear these words of Paul's. But we're often fearful. We feel inadequate. We want it to be somebody else's job. We're too old or too young, too busy or too tired. But God isn't actually asking for volunteers for a special mission, though he does do that from time to time. 
But here he is laying out the reality that this is our calling. All of us, from the moment we put our faith in Christ to the moment our eyes close for the last time. We do not fight alone or unsupported. The commander in chief himself fights alongside us, our ever present help in times of trouble. We've been provided with a full set of equipment the basic kit which enables us to stand firm. We can only hope to fight effectively if we found a good place to stand with a firm footing. We have the belt of truth, which frees us up for action. No trailing clothing to trip us up. No susceptibility to the lies which are the devil's stock in trade. We have the breastplate of Christ's righteousness, which protects us from the devil's accusations reminding us that we are former rebels. The sandals, which give us the firm footing of Christ's peace from which we can advance and makes us ready to obey the orders of the CO. In addition to this, we need to take from the armourer's stores the shield of faith, the big Roman shield designed to protect the whole body, and catch and extinguish all the fiery lies and doubts which are often the opening salvo in a spiritual battle. The helmet of salvation, the right thinking which protects us from the idea that we can do this alone and that trying harder will win out in the end. And the sword of the spirit, the word of God written and spoken, God's final gift to his soldiers one which requires training in use and endless practice to become more and more effective. As a young Christian in the 50s, I was encouraged to memorise scripture and I was hopeless at it. Now, 60 years later, I find that a lifetime of reading scripture, hearing it explained and seeking to apply it in my life has given me a reservoir from which God can often find just the right words to help when I need it. So how does this apply to us here today? Spiritual warfare is not a choice, something we can opt out of or leave to the experts. It's a fact of life. When we fight against racial inequality, injustice, prejudice, against all the things around us that are wrong, we're not primarily fighting people, but the force behind them. Scary stuff. We can feel inadequate and intimidated. And in that moment, the devil has won the first skirmish. We know, or we should know, that we will be attacked, but that we have no need to fear. We are to be fully committed to the fight. We need to be ready. And we shouldn't even think of retreat. Because the good news is that Satan's power is limited Jesus is the victor, his victory rooted in the cross. One day the battle will be ended and Christ's ultimate victory is certain. Paul's letter comes to an end reminding us to pray for each other, support and care for each other. And he asks for special prayer for himself and by extension for all who are spreading the good news to others especially those who are being ill-treated as a result of their efforts. The chains Paul speaks of may be the literal chains he was subject to in a Roman prison, or may remind us that at that time ambassadors often wore ceremonial chains, which reflected the riches, power and authority of the ruler they represented. The idea that as we gossip the good news, we too are representing the ultimate rich, powerful, and authoritative power in the universe is very sobering. Does God really know what he's doing in trusting this task to people like me? I surely need the peace, love and faith which Paul sends to his friends. Peace, love and faith which come from the Father and the Son through the Holy Spirit. This grace is the ultimate gift which will enable us all having done all to stand. Let's pray. Father God, 
We thank you that as you foresaw our part in the battle from the time the serpent successfully tempted Eve in the garden, so you provided all that we need to play our part in that battle. May we go out from here today encouraged and strengthened in the provision you have made for us. But most of all, may you be glorified through our lives as we become more and more part of your plan for the redemption of the whole of creation. Amen. Thank you, Sue. There is such richness in that passage, isn't there? That Sue started to bring out for us. I wonder about you. What are the areas where you realise actually there's a, there's a handbrake on your Christian life? I wonder which of those pieces of spiritual armour are ones that you are in particular need of putting on. Perhaps you could pray that yourself and ask God to show you. Ask someone who knows you, maybe, to advise you on it if you're not sure. Actually, all we need is there. God gives us everything we need. But he does so as his people. And that's why gathering together is so important, whether we do it virtually and when we do it in person. It's so important to be known. Well, in a moment, I'm going to say a closing prayer. And after that, we're going to have our closing hymn. Themed on our passage there, Soldiers of Christ Arise and Put Your Armour On. A great uh, hymn by Charles Wesley. After the service, if you can join us, there is going to be an online Zoom discussion. The links have been sent out uh, to our regulars. Um, if you are able to uh, do that, uh, that'd be great. If you want to know in future weeks and you don't really get these emails, please do email me vicatuda at gmail.com and I'll send you the link for future weeks. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for hearing our prayers, feeding us with your word and encouraging us in our meeting together. Take us and use us to love and serve you and all people. Amen. And now I may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let's stand and sing, soldiers of Christ arise and put your armour on. Strange to